Welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're going to do a quick tutorial here on non-destructive filters. So traditionally when you use a filter and you would come up and apply that filter, so we would just come up here and grab any filter and we'll just simply do a Gaussian blur. And we'll go to Gaussian blur, we're going to blur that image. If I was to save this and close this image out, I couldn't go back and change this if I decided that I didn't like it later. So what I'm going to show you how to do is make it so this is editable at any time as long as you save this as a layer inside of Adobe Photoshop. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we need to go back there and you are going to create a duplicate of your image. Now, if you have some adjustments and we'll just come in here and click a couple adjustments, that's perfectly fine. You can leave those adjustments in there. So I'm just going to come up here and hit plus. You can also hit command option shift E, which is stamp visible. Now, sometimes command option shift E doesn't work or that's control option shift E on or that's control alt shift E on a PC most likely. And if that happens, what you need to do is just come down here and hit the little plus to make a new layer and then do that quick key command option shift E and it will create what's called a stamped visible. And stamped visible means it is a combination of all these adjustments. So at this point, this is overriding all this. We could actually turn all this off at this point because none of this would take effect because this is overriding it, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna keep those back on. The next step is to turn this into a smart object. Now turning this into a smart object is what makes this non-destructive. So you're gonna come out here to this gray space and you're going to right click. And now if you're on a Mac and you don't have a right click button or know how to right click, you can always hit control click and that will bring this up. And you're gonna go right here to convert this to a smart object. Now that's the key element. So we get this little symbol right here and that's telling us that this is a smart object. Now we're gonna come up here to the filters and just about every filter is gonna be available when working with a smart object. So you can see right now vanishing point won't work and there might be a couple other little items. So it looks like lens blur doesn't work when you are working with a smart object. But basically most filters are gonna work when you're working with a smart object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to blur gallery and we're going to go to tilt shift. So what we're going to do is apply this tilt chip filter. And I'm not really worried about this being a super intelligent filter. So just going to come in here and adjust it a little bit. So what tilt shift is doing is it's blurring this out and blurring this out here. We have a little bit more depth in our image instead of everything in focus. And then once we're done, we're going to come up here and just go ahead and click OK. And now you can see we are using what's called a smart filter. So now if I save this layer, because it's a smart filter, it allows me to turn this on or off. And this works for any filter that is available inside a Photoshop. So if you didn't want to use the blur gallery, you wanted to come down here and use mosaic, or you wanted to render clouds, or you wanted to use noise or distort, any of those things that you want to use, you are able to use a smart filter. So the cool thing is you can add multiple filters. So what we'll do is we'll just come back up here to filter and we will go down to render lens flare. And we're just gonna, I'm not even gonna try to make an intelligent lens flare, we're just gonna do it. All right, so we've got that lens flare there. So the cool thing is you can either turn off all the smart filters or just one of the smart filters at a time and see how that looks. So this is a great option. In this case, I don't want the lens flare, so I can go ahead and turn this off. Now I can save this as a PSD supporting layers or a TIFF file, which is supporting layers. And when I open this back up, this is all gonna be now available to me. Now one of the cool things about working with smart object is we have a mask here. So I can select this mask and I can put a mask on these filters. So what I can do is make this black, take my brush, I'm gonna make this brush really big so we can do this quickly, and I can paint this out of this area. Now, not only am I using a smart filter, but I'm also using a mask to apply it only to a specific area. Now, this is why we need to have these layers turned on. Once I make a mask, 
it is going to not show that and it's going to show what's going on to the image below. So that is how you turn filters into smart filters and work a little bit more intelligently inside of Adobe Photoshop. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>